Good evening to uh, everybody. Uh, this is Prashanti Dasri. Uh, I'm from India and uh, I'm actually a born Christian and uh, I migrated to uh, Dubai recently, uh, August 2011. And I happened to, uh, you know, I, uh, I came to know about Islam. Uh, and uh, my brother also here is in Dubai and he keeps telling us about Allah. I'm really convinced and, uh, you know, with all the uh, whatever knowledge that he shared with me, I'm totally convinced uh, and that, you know, Islam is the straightforward religion. And uh, Allah is Alpha, His Omega, His the beginning and the His last. We cannot see sun more than 10 minutes. So how can we see a creator? So I'm totally convinced, but there are some questions, uh, you know, that uh, we have doubts because since I'm a born Christian, I have uh, four questions, total four questions to uh, Brother uh, Zakir Naik. Uh, the first question is, Brother, I've been uh, listening to your videos, you know, in YouTube that uh, you were uh, talking about the Holy Spirit and uh, you specifically mentioned that uh, Holy Spirit exists. So, uh, I just wanted to know, is Holy Spirit there in Islam, according to Quran? And also, there is a verse in Old Testament Bible that the Spirit of God is hovering over the waters. Spirit of God. So, is Holy Spirit a separate from Allah? This is my question. Assalamu alaikum friends. First listen to Dr. Zakar Naik, but at the end of this video, then I will explain more about this. So let's start it. Sisters asked two questions. Question number one is that there is Holy Spirit. What is the meaning and who is this Holy Spirit as per the Quran, as per Islam, as compared to Christianity? And the Bible does say that the Spirit of God hovers above the water. What does it mean? Is the Holy Spirit separate than God? Sister, you asked two questions. If I answer these two questions, will you accept Islam? I have totally four questions. So, uh, okay, I'm, so, I'm you want, so you want me to answer the first two and then you'll ask the next two questions. No, no, yeah, absolutely. I'm 70% I'm convinced, you know, whatever knowledge that my brother shared with me and I've been watching your videos, I'm 70% I'm convinced. I'm being very honest and uh, very transparent. So inshallah, if the four questions are answered, Yes. If you are convinced 100% will accept Islam. Inshallah. I will accept Islam. <laughs> the sister asked two questions and after she asked the other two questions that the Bible does mention about Holy Spirit. What is the reference of Holy Spirit in the Quran? What the definition of Holy Spirit? It is not the same as mentioned Islam because when the Christians when they talk about the Holy Spirit, they assume it is part of the Trinity, the triune God, though the word Trinity doesn't exist in the Bible, no way. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When they say Father, they think about Almighty God, like a Santa Claus sitting in the heavens with the earth at the footstool. When they talk about the Son, they think about Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, like Jeffrey Hunter in the movie King of Kings with blue eyes and good nose, not a polyp nose like a Jew. When they talk about the Holy Spirit, they think about dove that came at Pentecost or when Jesus Christ was being baptized. What is the spirit that is mentioned in the Quran? What I believe is Quran talks about Archangel Gabriel. He was one of the angels sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of his roles was to get the revelation to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and many other roles he has got. So we believe in the Archangel. So like that, if you say that there is a spirit, we have no problem. But he's not part of the triune God. And both are separate. The angel, the Archangel Gabriel is separate than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the spirit even mentioned in the Bible is separate than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They aren't joined. This is the teaching of the church. Because the word Trinity doesn't exist anywhere in the Bible. But if you read the Quran, the Trinity is mentioned twice in the Quran. In Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 171, where it says, Don't say Trinity. Disestop it, it's better for you. 
So Quran says, Wala taqulu salasa, don't sit in it. And the same message is repeated in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 73. It says, Lakat kafral lazina kalu, they are doing kuf, those who say that God is three in one. So the word Trinity appears in the Quran twice, and both the places it says it is wrong to use the word Trinity. And in the Quran, it is mentioned that don't say Trinity, but the word Trinity doesn't exist in the Bible. The closest verse to Trinity in the Bible is the first epistle of John, chapter number 5, verse number 7, which says, For there are three that bear a in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. So this verse, if you read the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, revised by Thaidu scholars of the highest eminence, Christian scholars, they say that this verse of first epistle of John, chapter number five, verse number seven, is an interpolation, is a fabrication, is a concoction, and they've thrown this verse out of the Bible. So the verse in the Bible that was not talking directly about Trinity, but the closest to Trinity, is thrown out by the scholars of Christianity as a fabrication, as a concoction. So but natural the spirit and Almighty God, they're two different entities, they're not the same. And in the Quran, it talks about Archangel Gabriel. He is the angel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hope that answers the question, sister. Yes, brother. I would like to know your other two questions. Yeah, uh, my third question is, um, which is related to Holy Spirit only. Uh, all the prophets, all the man of God, like uh, Prophet Abraham, Prophet Isaac, and uh, Prophet Moses, peace be upon them. Uh, all the prophets, they used to intercede with Allah. They used to interact with Allah. So to interact with Allah, because they are all the chosen ones, they must be gifted by some strength. It might be the grace of God. So it is a power. There is that some power so that they are able to interact with Allah. So what is that power? So what is my understanding? I mean, what was my understanding all these days was with the help of Holy Spirit, all the prophets were interceding with Allah. Is that true? Sister has the question that the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intercede with Almighty God. Then she said interaction with Almighty God. Sister, the English word intercede and interaction are two different things. So is your question intercede or interaction? Intercede. Intercede means that someone intercedes on somebody else's behalf. Someone intercedes on somebody else's behalf. Now this you have to realize that when you speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need anyone to intercede. The Quran says in Surah Ghafir, chapter number 40, verse 760, you ask me and I will answer your prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require anyone to intercede with him. Why? And people give the example that you know when you go in a court of law, when you're presenting your case to the judge, you hire lawyers. So like that, the messengers of God are our lawyers. This is okay and logical for a judge who is a human being. Because the judge does not know who is the criminal, who is the robber. So the lawyer helps the judge to understand who is a criminal, who is a robber, who is not. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has still made gap. He does not require anyone to prove to him who is good, who is bad. So it is wrong to say intercede. Yes, someone can pray. A messenger can pray for other human beings. And Allah says in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require any intercession except who he wills on the day of judgment. So on the day of judgment, Allah says, he will give permission to certain people to intercede. And this, the hadith saying that this special favor will be given to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So what we know from the history of all the other scriptures, as well as the Quran, as well as the hadith, that the messengers of God, they interacted with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They prayed for others. But if we use the Prophet to intercede, that means if I pray that if I go through this Prophet, Following the commandments of Prophet is good. But if I pray to somebody else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
that's what many of the human beings do they pray to human beings saying they are closer to almighty god so if we pray through him god will accept our prayer faster and better this is wrong we have to pray to allah swt directly these prophets of god they are messengers yes they have special powers they have special powers they can speak to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses certain men amongst men chooses certain men to communicate his message to the other human beings these chosen people of almighty god we call as prophets or we call as messengers of god so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selects certain human beings in the world to communicate his message to the other human beings these are called as messengers of god so there is communication between the messenger and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but that does not mean that human beings can use these messengers to intercede that if they pray to these messengers almighty god will listen to us this is the teaching of the church that you believe in jesus christ peace be upon him and all your sins will be forgiven this concept doesn't exist in islam and doesn't exist even in true christianity it is the teaching of the church sister hope that answers the question yeah uh, my final question is uh, uh, in new testament uh, i mean uh, in one book book of acts paul mentioned about uh, tongues what do you uh, say about tongues in new testament i mean according to islam is that it's totally eliminated it's not there or or the gift of tongues existed at that time sister asked the question that paul said about tongues if you give me the reference i'll be in a better position there are many things mentioned in the bible about tongues there are many verses in the quran which speaks about tongue if you give me the reference what you're talking about i'll be in a better position to reply to you but generally there are many statements in the bible talking about tongues and also says if you read the gospel if you read the gospel of mark it says that anyone who is a believer he will be able to understand foreign tongues and speak foreign tongues that means if you are a believer in god then you can understand foreign languages and you can speak foreign languages so that's what i did when i had a debate with dr william campbell i gave him a 100 rupee note and the indian 100 rupee note as you may be aware since we have got 22 official languages i read in english 100 rupees hindi says sau rupya i asked him to read the other 20 languages if he is a believer and he could not there are many references in the quran talking about tongues if you read the quran the quran says in surah rum chapter number 30 verse number 22 that allah subhanahu wa taala has created the human beings in different colors and tongues so that you should recognize each other so that the men of understanding will understand furthermore the quran says that on the day of judgment your tongues your organs your hands they will be witness for you what you did right what you did wrong there are various hadith of the prophet talking about the tongue so there are many references in the quran talking about the tongue there are many references in the bible that talk about tongue and how to test a believer hope that answers the question sister thank you and my final question <laughs> okay uh, i have a muslim friend and he suggested me uh, to read bible old testament okay he specifically mentioned to uh, follow go through the old testament in bible and then he said read quran uh, but uh, as you mentioned specifically uh, you know that uh, quran is the final uh, revelation given by allah so uh, as a muslim what do you suggest me uh, because my friend is being a muslim he said follow bible old testament and then read quran so sister as the question the one of her friends told her that first read the old testament then read the quran sister it's not the must if there is something like the old testament and the new testament then there's something like the last testament in the quran so when the christians say old and new testament this is the last and final testament of allah subhanahu wa taala now i am asking you the question suppose you have different versions and editions of a book for example you have gone to a medical college other than a medical college you know professor keith more wrote some books 
and his book at first edition, second edition, third edition. So would you read the first edition or the latest edition? Of course, I'll go for the latest. Latest, correct. Yes. If you really love the first edition, you know, I'm a fan of the first edition, then I said, no problem, read the first edition, then read the last edition. So if you're so much hooked on to the Old Testament, and you know, your Old Testament is close to your heart, then the Quran says in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 64, Ta'ala wila kalimatin sawaim bayna baynakum. Come to common terms, I have been asking you. Then I would say that if you are so much hooked on to the Old Testament, no problem, read the Old Testament, then read the Quran, at least agree what is common. And when we read the Old Testament, New Testament and the Quran, we come to know that the thing that is common in these scriptures is that there is one God and He deserves to be worshipped. He has got no image. He is not begotten. It further says that Jesus Christ peace is not God. And both these scriptures say that the last and final messenger is Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. So sister, now are you prepared to accept Islam? Of course, yes. <laughs> Sister, do you believe that there is one God? Yes, I believe there is only one God. Do you believe that Jesus is not God but is a messenger of God? Yes, I believe Jesus is a messenger. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger? Yes, I believe Prophet Muhammad is the last and the final messenger. Sister, is there anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Sorry? Is there anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No, nobody is forcing me. Are you accepting out of your free will? Yes. Because in Islam, to force anyone to accept Islam is haram. It's haram in the religion and it's haram, it's prohibited in most of the countries, I believe, even in Dubai. To force anyone to accept a religion is forbidden. So you're accepting out of your free will, sister? Yes. But that is the reason I asked you many questions. MashaAllah. Out of free will. <laughs> hope. I hope no one is bribing you. No. <laughs> you know, because in India, when after many people accept Islam, the CID, the police go there and ask how much dollars Dr. Zakir I give you. <laughs> I tell them I have given them currency of the Akhira. Currency of the Akhira and that's accepted. So inshallah, sister, I will say in Arabic and you can repeat it. Okay. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadru. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rusuluhu. Wa rusulu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God. That there is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that that Prophet Muhammad Prophet Muhammad is the messenger is the messenger and servant of Allah and servant of Allah. Mashallah, sister, you're a Muslim, yeah. and may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept your effort. And I pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that to guide you further and inshallah give you the best in this world as well as the akhirah and grant you a place in paradise. Inshallah, sister. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum friends. After all this, I want to say something more to everyone. That's it. Always attend to Dr. Zakir Naik's question and answer sessions. That's may be beneficial for individuals because he often addresses questions related to Islam, providing clarity and understanding on various aspects of the religion. His sessions contribute to educational content, helping individuals learn more about Islam and its principles. He has been involved in interfaith discussions promoting understanding and peaceful coexistence among people of different religions. He encourages critical thinking and thoughtful exploration of religious concepts. It's essential to approach any religious teaching with an open mind and consider diverse perspective for a well-rounded understanding. You can also benefit from all this, but you need to stay connected with us. So please press the subscribe button that's below in this video.